I've been flying drones for over six years at the recording of this video. Everything from small drones to really big drones. But when it comes to flying FPV drones, there's a special feeling to it. Something that makes you push every flight a little bit faster and a little bit closer to things. It's a very deep rabbit hole to jump into, and I've only been flying for a year. And as a beginner FPV pilot, I found it very hard to know where you should start your FPV journey. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. If this is your first time here, I just wanna say hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Peter Lindgren, and if you've been around for quite some time, no further introduction is needed. Just happy to have you here. When I first picked up an FPV drone, it was the OG DJI FPV. It was a special experience, I guess you could say. I crashed my monitor here in the studio, and whatever you do, do not start an FPV drone inside, ever. So I went outside and thought I was flying the drone in actual FPV mode, but I was actually flying in sport mode, but still managed to crash it. It was not a good start on my FPV journey. But fast forward almost an entire year and DJI released the Avata. That is where I sort of like decided to pick things up again, but start from the beginning, sort of like from scratch. The DJI Avata is probably one of the best drones that you can get when it comes to an FPV drone for beginners that you don't have to worry too much about. Especially if you get it with a ProView combo because then you can sort of like get the feeling of how it is to fly with the goggles and then use the motion controller to fly around. But don't be fooled though because the motion controller and flying the Avata is nothing like flying in real acro mode with an FPV drone. The downside with buying the ProView combo though is that it is very expensive. Expensive. You gotta punch out, here in Sweden at least, $1,500 to get the ProView combo. If you just want to sort of like dip your toes into the FPV world and see how it is to fly a real FPV drone, then there is a bunch of different simulators that you can download. My favorite one is Liftoff. I practice in this simulator almost every single day. And the good thing here is that you can just buy the DJI FPV remote and plug that into your computer and start flying in the simulator to actually get the feeling of how it is to fly real FPV. I've been getting so many comments on social media saying that, yeah, but flying in the simulator is not something that can simulate wind or it's not gonna translate into the real world. But honestly, it does. I've been flying the simulator now for approximately 100 hours, and I think it's very similar to flying in the real world. And having a good simulator is something that I highly recommend. I'm gonna drop a link down below if you wanna check things out. Flying in true acro mode is way harder than it sounds. When you're feeling a little bit comfortable in simulator and you know the in and outs with flying in acro mode, that is where you should take the step to actually go and buy a real drone. And that is where I highly recommend the DJI Avata, mainly because you get the DJI goggles too, which is a high resolution screen right in front of your eyes. And you also have the diopters. So if you're like me and you have uh, glasses, then you can adjust it to make it look sharp without your glasses, which is great. I love that. You already have the FPV remote because you purchased it when you tried it out in the simulator. And then of course you get the drone. The Avata is built like a tank. And the good thing with that is that when you go in full acro mode, you will crash and then you want to make sure that you have a drone that you can crash. You also do get the motion controller when you buy the ProView combo but it's also nothing similar to the motion controller and flying in full acro mode. It's not like you can't even compare the two. So if you're a good pilot with a motion controller you're gonna have a whole new world opening up to you when you start flying in acro mode. <laughs> the Avata also has a bunch of safety measures that you can use when you take things out into the real world. For example, if you go into full-on manual mode and then you just want to take a break, then you just flick a switch and the drone is going to stop and it's going to hover for you. That is something that you can't do with a custom FPV drone. And for a beginner, that is a great thing to have. You will feel very unsecured to begin with and it's gonna be very uh, shoppy when you're flying, at least I did, because I remember when I was starting to fly the Avata in full-on manual mode, it was like, uh, but it takes time. It requires a lot of practice to be able to get those smooth flights with the Avata. When you go into full-on acro mode, you're gonna be able to do flips and flops and uh, even flippity flops. And doing your first dive in full-on acro mode is probably one of the coolest feelings that I know of when it comes to filmmaking and RC stuff. Once you feel that the Avata is sort of like limiting the way that you can fly or you want to have a little bit more or you want to push your drone a little bit further, that is in my opinion when you should 
sort of like take a step in into real FPV drones. There's a bunch of different ways that you can take this step and one of them is of course to build a custom drone and trying to sort of like figure everything out as you go along. If you are one of those people that like to tinker and like to try to figure things out then this is a great way for you to do that but if you're anything like me you just sort of like just want to skip that part and find a drone that you can fly right now. And that is where you can purchase something that is called a bind and fly drone. Basically what that means is that if you have the DJI FPV remote and then you buy a custom drone with the DJI O3 air unit on, then you can just bind the controller to the air unit and you're gonna be able to control that with the remote that you already have. And there's a bunch of different brands that are offering bind and fly drones nowadays, which is great because again, I don't wanna build my own drone. <laughs> But when you're going into the custom FPV drone route, you also got to think of getting a charger, getting some LiPo batteries, and of course, an action camera to have on top of your drone. If you want, you can use the DJI O3 Air unit that is on the drone to record with. You don't need to have an action camera, but I highly recommend it because the quality is going to be way better. So when I first learned about custom drones, everyone was just saying, oh, should you buy a 5-inch or should you buy a 7-inch? And I had absolutely no idea what a 5-inch was or a 7-inch. But apparently they're talking about the dimensions of the props on the actual drone and it took me quite some time to figure out which kind of drone that I should buy and why I should buy that specific drone. Basically 5 inch drones and 7 inch drones are the way to go. A 7 inch drones is a little bit of a bigger drone that allows you to fly a little bit more smooth and cruise along those mountain ridges a little bit more and have a little bit longer flight time because you have more thrust, you have a bigger battery and that can be great if that is what you want to do but they're also more expensive than a 5 inch drone and a 5 inch drones allows you to get into the action a little bit more because it's a smaller drone and it's also more lightweight and agile so you're going to able to do a bunch of different quick turns and flip the flops and everything that you can think of. I've currently tried three different 5-inch FPV drones that I think is great in their own way, but I wanted to share my thoughts on why I think one of them is better than the other. We're going to start with this, which is the Flow X2 from a company that's called FPV Frames. It is a fun drone to fly. It's a great drone, and what I like about this drone is that you can sort of like strap a big battery onto this that gives you a little bit more flight time than if you were to have a smaller battery onto this but when you have a bigger battery it also means more weight and that means less thrust with the drone. As you can see here in the front, we have the DJI O3 air unit, a mount for the GoPro up top. And you also have this receiver that you can see, which is called TBS Crossfire. And if you're not using the DJI remote as your controller and you want to use something like this, the TBS Tango 2 Pro, then you need to have a crossfire receiver and a crossfire transmitter in order to be able to fly the drone. This controller though is something that I highly recommend. It's $300 here in Sweden. In my opinion, much better than the FPV controller that you can buy from DJI. Mainly because the travel distance on the gimbals are longer on this controller, which gives you more precise movements when you're flying the drone. And the downside with this drone though, is that it's a little bit on the expensive side. It's a $1,300 drone. I think it's a great drone for what it is, but there is drones that are cheaper that you can get sort of like the same result from without punching out this amount of money. But it is one of my favorite drones because the possibility of having both a small battery and a big battery on this drone. The next drone that I got is the iFlight Nazgul Evoke with the DJI O3 air unit here in the front. It also has these plastic things here on the side that I feel is a little bit gimmicky, you know, because you don't need them and it just adds weight to the drone that is so like unnecessary. So I use this as more of a backup drone than a drone that I fly regularly. Regular, regularly, regular, regularly. The last 5-inch drone that I got is the drone that I highly recommend as well. This is the GEP RC Mark V with the D DJI O3 air unit here in the front, a TBS Crossfire here in the back as well. Why do I like this drone then? Well, mainly because it's very simple to fly. It's very easy to control 
and it definitely feels like they didn't put too much stuff onto this drone. It has some powerful motors and it's just a joy to fly and I've been taking this out in strong winds and it can definitely hold up to those strong winds as well. This was actually the first real custom FPV drone that I flew when I was up in Lapland and it felt very similar to the liftoff simulator that I have been practicing in. When it comes to flying custom FPV drones and when it comes to you know understanding how they work you need to practice your skills in a program that is called beta flight which most of the drones are based on or most of the flight controllers are in this program there's a bunch of different parameters that you can play around with do not I repeat do not have the props on whenever you have your drone plugged in to beta flight highly recommend you just to remove them it took me quite some time and a lot of asking my friends to understand that it doesn't matter how much you practice with the drone because if you want to fly cinematic or if you want to fly those smooth sailing kind of moves that you can see some fpv pilots do it comes down to the rates that you set on your drone so if you want to fly racing drones or if you want to fly really fast with super quick turns and don't care about the smoothness of the flight, you can adjust your rates to fit the way of flying that you enjoy. But if you want to fly the way that I do or the, the way that I'm you know, aspiring to do, then having your rates set kind of low is something that I highly recommend. Going to beta flight, there's something that's called actual rates and that is what I use. I'm gonna drop the rates down in the description down below so when you're buying your first custom drone, you can just plug it in, make sure that you have the correct rates and then you can go out to fly. To sum this video up, Start with the simulator, move on to a DJI FPV drone, highly recommend the Avata. Once that is feeling like it's limiting you from actually expanding the way that you fly, that is where you move up to one of these bad boys. This one is something that I highly recommend. It's a great drone to fly, doesn't cost you an arm or a leg. It's a great fun drone with a lot of power and a lot of control. Highly recommend it. If you have any questions, do drop them down below and I'm gonna try to answer them. And uh, I hope you will subscribe, hope you enjoyed the video, and that you will come back for the next video. Peter from Sweden is saying thank you for watching and uh, have a good one. See you in the next video.